Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, some bad news. YAM token holders are burnt the hardest after price plunges to zero. And we're going to take a look at the negative aspects of decentralized finance or DeFi also. Cardano's upcoming Shopify integration will enable ADA payments in over 500,000 online stores. And I'm going to tell you, someone who has an online business or a couple of them, this is pretty big news. Speaking of big news, U.S. Postal Service files blockchain voting patent following Trump cuts. And I got to tell you, this is one of those things. This is one of my pet projects that I really look forward to. And that is voting on the blockchain. I think this is far overdue. I don't understand what is taking so long. And finally, in the eat some crow section, uh, Grayscale Investments enjoy its best week ever after national ad blitz. And we're going to talk about uh, what I thought about the ad beforehand and uh, just how wrong I was. Before we get into that, let's take a look at the market. It is August 14th. It is roughly ooh, 3 o'clock p.m. Texas time. And let's see what's going on. So Bitcoin just hovering, I think just hovering under 12,000. I would like to see a nice little breakthrough. I think we all would. But 11.7 is pretty darn good. And 0.8% up. I like that. Also, Ethereum doing gangbusters, hitting 438. I think 450 is around the corner. And I got to tell you, I think there's a lot of room to run because after it hit that $400 uh, ceiling, it just seemed to like just take off like it was no resistance whatsoever. So fantastic. All those Ethereum holders. XRP. Usually this is where I say uh, XRP whatever sense watch out but uh to give a little credit it is up 6.7 percent so uh hey look at that 30 cents tether is still tether and that's just how it is chain link uh down a little bit looks like 3.1 percent 63 for the uh, week and uh i know it was getting up to there to around the 7 1750 so a dollar above but uh i gotta tell you uh, I never thought it was going to go up that fast, that rapidly, but here we are. So uh, all the Chainlink holders, congratulations, tip of the hat. Bitcoin Cash up, great. Uh, Cardano up a little bit, that's great. Bitcoin SV up, no idea why. Uh, don't even know why it's in the top 10, honestly. And uh, that's about it. So it uh, looks like people, uh, EOS for some reason. Tron, uh, all you Tron holders must be pretty happy. 12%, 4.5%. 8% for IOTA, 2.8, uh, pretty good. Now as far as DeFi, we're going to take a look at what's going on as far as the little tumbles. Even though, I got to tell you, Ave is up 7.8%. Uh, so uh, we'll see what's going on. This all comes down to a uh, historic crash for what's called the YAM token. Let's jump in. So first up, YAM token holders burnt the hardest after price plunges to zero. So YAM Finance, which was an experimental, I got to make mention, this is very experimental DeFi protocol. This was kind of on the fringe of what could happen. I thought it was pretty interesting what they did here. But it crashed to zero after the discovery of a rebase bug. Compound, urine finance, and balancer plunged shortly uh, thereafter. But I got to tell you, even looking at uh, compound, let's jump back. Compound here is uh, number 31. It's only down 1.9%. And uh, Ava's up 7.8%. So, I mean, not too shabby. So for all the things about a uh, little bit of Paul Beck's here and there, but uh, really nothing to do with the overall ecosystem or what's going on with the other projects. But this really all has to do with this YAM. So what happened? Well, YAM Finance, it's an experimental DeFi protocol. Saw its market cap crash to zero within minutes yesterday uh, on August 13th. With it, major DeFi tokens. We were just talking about plunge as well. So this is what happened. On August 13th, YAM co-founder, I got to tell you, what a name, YAM. Brooke or Brock Elmore announced the protocol had a bug, pretty big bug. In an official Medium post, YAM developers wrote, hey, shortly after 7 a.m. on Thursday, August 13th, we submitted a governance proposal and cast a vote with what we originally believed were sufficient votes to be able to enact it. Shortly thereafter, with help from security experts, we concluded that the rebaser bug would interact with the governance module and prevent this proposal from succeeding. So uh, they found it just a little too late. And uh, Elmer, the co-founder there, emphasized in a later tweet that he is thankful for the insane support from the community. He said, hey, sorry, everyone, I failed. Thanks for uh, all the help, but I'm sick with grief. And um, yeah, I mean, look, it, again, it was experimental. And when I first saw this, I was like, man, did everybody lose their money or what's going on? But not so. So here's what's going on. Due to its decentralized nature, uh, when YAM first launched, it allowed users to stake various cryptos to earn YAM. So the staking model enabled the YAM protocol to distribute YAM tokens in a transparent way. So essentially what you were doing is that you were putting up things like uh, Compound, Ave, Lend, Chainlink, whatever, uh, and you were 
given back yam. So you weren't uh, putting up any cash. You weren't putting up any type of cryptocurrency. You were just staking it. And from what I understand, you could unstake it whenever you wanted to. And uh, it was just a good uh, experiment. Unfortunately, it didn't work out so hot on this one. We'll see what happens later on. But anyhow, within 24 hours, nearly $500 million worth of capital was locked in the YAM protocol. And I got to tell you, that's impressive, but it's also scary at the same time. And I know DeFi is the hot word right now, right? You cannot swing a dead cat without someone talking about DeFi. And I got to tell you, so DeFi sounds fantastic and I think it's going to be big, but again, it's, I've seen this, this whole song and dance before. I've been around, you've been around probably. And you know, like things that are very hot, ICO token craze, you know, different things like that. Um, there's only so much I can actually do. And uh, DeFi, who knows how many projects are going to make it? Who knows how far it could go? But I think people are just losing their minds just a little bit. Um, that's why I'm always, you know, preaching about just the slow and steady pace. But, uh, you know, hey, what are you going to do? There's a lot of money to be made, and people love to make money. And anyway, moving on, it says, while no assets staked in Yam were lost, the value of Yam itself dropped to zero. Kelvin Coe, the co-founder of uh, venture capital Spartan Black, said big yam holders were hit the hardest. He said so much for yam farming, the big yam hodlers got burnt the hardest anyway. Thankfully, no assets were lost. Exactly. So like nothing, nothing venture, nothing gained, right? I am sure someone somewhere is already preparing the next iteration of crop farming. So most of the yam holders uh, were held by users who uh, that were distributed through staking, but some, let me move this out of the way, some users bought yam on decentralized exchanges like uniswap meaning that they put up cash and that cash is gone because everything went to zero however you know it doesn't go to zero until you sell out but i got to tell you uh there is some the, the concerning thing was this is that take a look at the price so it went from essentially nothing uh to all of a sudden it was all the way up to well, let's see 85 87 97, 91, and then it topped out at $159.54 per yam. So you take a look at that, and then here's where they found a bug. Oh, what's going on? There's a bug, and then 14 bucks, and then all of a sudden, boom, down you go to a 20, 96 cents, 70 cents. And I think right now it's below even that. So again, nothing venture, nothing gained, and uh, here we are. But uh, my final thoughts are this great experiment, uh, brings up the issues with DeFi. Um, I was, you know, I got to tell you, this is another thing that I was wrong about. I was always, always critical uh, for Charles Hoskinson and Cardano because they were so slow, so meticulous. Ethereum the same way. But I got to tell you, sometimes it does pay off to uh, take that slow road, uh, double, triple, quadruple, check everything, make sure it's right, and then move forward. So tip of the hat to those guys. Anyhow, as far as DeFi go, expect some bumps and even the occasional sinkhole, but I do think it will be huge, especially for small businesses. All right, let's move on. Next up, Cardano's upcoming Shopify integration will enable payments in over 500, half a million online stores. Let me tell you, that sounds good to me. So what's going on here? The latest and unique pools of the Shelly network is the Shop Stake Pool. That's developing the first Cardano e-commerce integration for Shopify, which will enable ADA payments in over half a million online stores. This developer, uh, Uni Univocity, is going to build Cardano integrations with e-commerce and enable customers to pay for their online purchases with ADA. Forget this, zero fees and zero commissions. So I'm like, all right, well, you know, tell me more because let's see what we got. So one of the main aspects of the project is that neither the shopper nor the online retailer will have to pay any fees and commission to the platform on top of the price of items bought. And I got to tell you, so for me and my online businesses, I pay 2.99% plus 30 cents for every transaction. That's usually what you're going to get for Stripe. These are what you're going to get for PayPal. That's highway robbery. Every year, and we're not talking like just a couple hundred bucks here, tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, easy, easy on, on, on each business. So when I see something like this, I'm all about it. And you can bet your bottom dollar that other retailers are going to look at this very hard and go, you know what? I like that. I want to do that. I don't want to pay to these processors some ridiculous fee when I can go over here. So again, this is the thing that you, you couldn't see coming just what, you know, a year ago, two years ago. This is what I'm talking about as far as the things that can happen with cryptocurrency and digital assets, making the world just a better place, at least for me and my business. That's really what it is. Anyhow, Moving down, it says, with a possible reach of half a million stores, Cardano's use case will be a solid start to push for further adoption and boost ADA's price to a dollar. 
please. That would be fantastic. And uh, that's about it. So again, I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but I'd like to see that. I would love to see that uh, integrated as soon as possible. And things are moving, so we will see. All right, moving on. Next up, this is more of an article that's more dear to me because I've always talked about I only I, I see blockchain as a fantastic use case, especially for voting. I mean, if we can open up a bank without stepping foot outside our door, we give them the AML, the KYC, the social securities, uh, the, the passport or our uh, IDs, and we're able to, you know, have a ton of money out there. Why can't we vote like that? This doesn't make any sense to me. I, 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 don't, I just don't get it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section, but I don't get it. So this makes me excited. A new patent has been filed by the U.S. Postal Service or USPS, which appears to use blockchain to make mail-in voting a safe alternative to physical polling stations amid the COVID-19 pandemic. And let me just tell you something right now. There is no reason that we have to go out to vote when we have a very easy way to do things. And I know people are going to say, well, fraud and this and that. Sure, I get it. But you know what? This should have been implemented a long time ago. And when it does, I got to tell you, I don't think the COVID-19 coronavirus is the only virus that's going to come out and uh, cause havoc globally. So as time goes on, uh, we need to get these things, we need to get these initiatives uh, you know, put in place so we actually do the things that we used to do because uh, who knows what the new normal is actually going to be. Anyhow, let me get back to the story. This development releases to a voting system that also incorporates the use of cryptographic elements such as blockchains as are used with cryptographic currencies to track and secure the vote by mail system, said a patent filing dated yesterday. So they've already put it in. They're waiting for it to be approved, and it looks like they're going to push forward, and that would be fantastic. In some embodiments, a blockchain allows the tracking of the various types of necessary data in a way that is secure and allows others to easily confirm that data has not been altered, the patent detail. And I got to tell you, I'm tired of hearing uh, mail-in voter fraud. Uh, whether it exists or not, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about here's a way to finally put an end to even the discussion. Like, let's just use blockchain and let's just do it this way and then we can just move forward. Why not? Lastly, it says the patent laid out voting operations based on blockchain, complete with ballot codes, e-signatures, and other intricate points working in tandem with two databases. So I'm not going to beat a dead horse again. I think this should be in place. I think it should have been in place a long time ago. There's no reason why we shouldn't have this. And uh, if you, everything that's going on, I mean, everything around us, I mean, just take a look around. I mean, we have things for currencies. We have things for decentralized finance. We have things for uh, tracking of uh, you know various products and uh, fraud. And now we are looking into something like this uh, for voting. Blockchain, just like Alex Mashinsky of Celsius says, is going to swallow the internet whole. And it's going to be a bigger thing than the internet ever was, maybe even 10x what the internet was. And I got to tell you, now that things are coming into play, I totally see it. All right, so that's it for that. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our last article. So last up, this one's pretty funny, actually. Grayscale Investments enjoy its best week ever after national ad blitz. So Grayscale Investments had its best fundraising week in history. Let me read that again. Grayscale, fundraising, best in history, following an ad blitz on a number of major television networks. Grayscale netted $217 million investments in the days following the campaign. Let me just tell you this. The campaign was like three or four days ago. <laughs> so not too bad, not too shabby for those four days. So whoever the ad agency, they're probably just strutting around going, yep, that's right. That's our commercial. We did that. Anyhow, the firm's Bitcoin trust fund was the biggest contributor to the success, adding uh, 14,000 plus Bitcoin, which is valued at $167 million, according to an SEC filing. Of course, they have others. They have uh, the XRP trust, the Ethereum trust, and everything else like that, right? And then on top of that, let me get this out of here. Uh, Galaxy Digital took out a full page ad in the Financial Times last week, but I think that's in Great Britain. I'm not for sure. But uh, yeah, Galaxy Digital is like, hey, we can get on that. If you guys did 200 million, uh, we're going to try to do the same thing. Do a little advertising. And that's the backbone of every uh, of every company, marketing advertising, right? So here was the ad itself. I'm not going to play it uh, because somebody, uh, one of my subscribers, rightfully so, said, hey, uh, watch out for copyright. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's true. So I shouldn't do that. So, I mean, the video, I'm just going to skip around. They just talk about, hey, fiat, uh, 
currency a long time ago. We used to use uh, grains. We used to use, uh, you know, pebbles. We used to, we still use gold uh, and whatever else. And they said, now look at what's going on with what the world is. There's money printing and it's very dangerous. And uh, who knows what's going to happen? You need Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, all these different things. You need Grayscale. And I got to tell you, uh, at first I was like, hmm, all right. So, um, I will just give you my, let's just, I'll break it like this. Let me give you my final thoughts in person on this one. All right, so I want to say this one in person because uh, this was one of those articles, uh, especially this, this advertisement that I saw, and I was like, that's not a good ad. It just isn't. Um, and then when I, when I put it out there, uh, people, some agreed and some didn't, but the majority was, wasn't a great ad. However, uh, it doesn't matter what I think. Uh, it doesn't matter what uh, anybody thinks. It, it really just comes down to, does the ad work for a certain segment of people? And the answer, of course, is a resounding yes. So I gotta tell you on this one, I got it totally wrong. I thought it would be like a bomb or whatever else. And, and I looked at it and I thought to myself, well, even though it wasn't a great ad, what made it work so well? And I think the answer is that it doesn't so much mean uh, that the message or what it is, it all comes down to the product. If the product is fantastic, if you have water in the Sahara, uh, it doesn't matter how much you're selling it for or how much marketing, I mean, you don't need any marketing because it's water in the Sahara because it's just a fantastic uh, product. And it's the same thing uh, with Bitcoin and digital assets. They did a really smart thing on there and they talked about quantitative easing. They talked about money printing and they talked about fiat currencies. So as they pull all these things together, it just makes sense and people are like, you know what? I've heard about that and I've heard about money printing and I know there's a problem and I know I should do something about it and I think that's what works. So if you just look at all these things together, it makes me even more bullish about uh, digital assets because look, this was, this was one ad uh, over the last three or four days and they made hundreds of millions of dollars. So um, what does that mean? I think it means that we're early. I think it means that we have a very bright future. So uh, that's all I wanted to say. One, I was wrong. I, I just I didn't get it right. <laughs> and then uh, and two, uh, it's a fantastic product, and I think we're all going to do very well. Uh, but we'll see what happens. All right, let's jump back. All right, and that's it. So thanks for sticking with me. Really appreciate it. Uh, we'll do some random shoutouts, which is one of my favorite parts. If you don't know, there's a join now uh, button underneath. And uh, I, you don't get anything special. There's nothing like a members area. It's just like a tip. It's like a buck ninety nine. And if you want to, great. Uh, these guys did, and I appreciate it. So I just give them random shout outs, especially the new one. So William Howell, Carlos Gomez, Droplet. There he is. Uh, hold on, who was that? Vito Derein. I nailed it. Patrick May, Fulja, Kenuman. Who else we got? Sean Thompson, uh, Frederick Brudier. I don't know if I said that right. Sally's W, Jack Allen, and Jesse B. So everybody, I want to say thanks so much for signing up. Really appreciate it. If you like those types of videos, be two more that's going to show up on your left and right. Don't know which uh, where they are because YouTube has control over that. But uh, uh, again, YouTube has control over that. Also, the ads that you saw today, uh, if they were scams or not, I have no idea. Uh, those are also controlled by YouTube. So if you got a problem, uh, go to the big guys. They'd love to hear from you. And uh, that is it. So again, thanks for sticking with me. Appreciate it. See you on the next one.